We're rocking the tiny mic today, everybody. It's cute. Hello, friends. By popular demand, and by popular demand, I mean three people. I'm gonna break down this video I created for Renaissance Hotels. My concept was to do some sort of hyperlapse transitional video showcasing different spaces of the hotel. I basically went in and filmed everything. I shot different parts of the hotel on different cameras. But that said, let's start with what gear I used. So the video is a mix of live action footage, which I shot on the Insta360 One RS one inch, and hyperlapses, which are a series of stills that I stitched together. Those I shot on my Sony a7 III with either a 16 to 35 or a 24 to 70 millimeter lens. Now, how did I actually go about capturing everything? For the 360 cam footage, I basically put that thing on a monopod and extended it as high as it could go. And I would move around the spaces and move the camera in a way that like flowed with each space. If you wanna get that like drone look with 360 cams, the key is to actually move the camera. You gotta walk around with a giant pole and have a lot of people look at you and be concerned. For the hyperlapses, I actually did a video that goes more in depth on this channel, which we'll link. You're gonna wanna put your camera in manual mode, turn on the grid lines for whatever camera you're using, pick a subject that you're shooting, whether it's a building, a person, and pick a point in your frame that you're gonna lock that specific subject to. Then you're gonna wanna physically take steps in a direction and with each step you take, you will take a photo of that locked on point. Does that make sense? And the rest is all done in the edit. So let's hop on over into the edit bay, which is right behind me. Here we are in my timeline. I'm gonna do a quick dive into all the things that are happening in this edit. First up is I'm keyframing my 360 cam footage. What that means is since the camera's recording in 360 degrees, I'm telling Premiere where I want the camera to move and look. So here in my timeline, I've pulled the first shot of the edit, which is the suitcase rolling up to the entrance of the hotel. Insta360 has a plugin for Premiere that you can download. It's called GoPro FX Reframe. Once you download Download and install it, it'll show up under your effects panel. Drag that onto your clip. Now under your effects controls, you'll see it here. And this is where you will add all your keyframe animations. I'm gonna first change this to nine by 16 since it's a vertical edit. Then I'll figure out how I want to open it. So I'll adjust the pan to face the suitcase. I have it start with a little bit of a rotation. Which I love adding this movement. Pull the zoom out a bit and then I will add keyframes for all of these. Then I'll drag my playhead forward to where I want the movement to land, and I'll adjust the rotation back to normal, zoom the camera in, then make a few other tweaks with pan and tilt. So you end up with something like this, but obviously in my normal edit, there's a lot more movement, so you basically would just play around with the keyframes, maybe add some more rotation in the beginning, I also like to highlight my keyframes and change it to visor, and that just smooths them out a bit. It's a lot of tweaking, it's a lot of playing around with different movements. So the more you play around with it, the better motion you'll end up getting. I'm also adding speed ramping to a lot of my footage. So to do that, I right click, show clip keyframes, time remapping speed, and then I will hold down command to the point where I want it to speed up or slow down, drag that up, and also drag this out to, to ease it in. And so that's how you can kind of get a little bit more speed in certain areas and movements that you want to speed up your footage. Then we have stitching together the hyperlapses. I'm gonna use this clock hyperlapse as an example. Once you've imported your stills into Premiere, you're gonna highlight the ones for your hyperlapse, right click, speed duration, you're gonna change the duration to this. You can adjust this based on how many images you shot. Then you're gonna wanna create a sequence with these images, go over to this wrench, Select show rulers and show guides. Then you go over to these sidebars and you drag out these little guidelines. So I'm gonna line them up with the center being the center of the clock here. You can choose whatever point you use to shoot your images. Under effect controls, under motion, you're just gonna go still by still, adjust your position scale rotation, 
to line up with those guidelines that you picked. The more time you spend making this perfect, the better your hyperlapse will look. You can also highlight everything, nest it, and apply a warp stabilizer effect. Sometimes this helps, it makes it look smoother. Sometimes it makes it look more wonky. So it just depends on the clips. Next up is I use directional blur to smooth out some of these transitions. So you'll see it here and here. I basically go ahead, create an adjustment layer, put that on top of my two clips. Go into my effects and drag directional blur onto my adjustment layer. Then in the effects controls, I will keyframe the direction and blur length, start it at zero. Once it hits that point of transition, I will drag these up to my liking. I'll also go ahead and add a mask right in the center. Invert it. Adjust the feather. And expansion. This just helps so that the whole image isn't super blurry. And then I'll drag my playhead forward and change this back down to zero. Just an easy way to add a little bit of motion blur and smooth out those transitions. Then we have a few transitions using masks. This is also a great way to transition, especially if you have like a door opening or a specific object you can use to go through. I'm gonna use these two shots from my edit as an example. I've already gone in and I keyframed the scale of this hyperlapse to zoom all the way in until this box fills out the whole frame. Then you're gonna to wanna to go to the point of transition under effects controls and under opacity, I'm gonna select this box because I want my transition to be square. Invert it and I will adjust these points here to fit within this little square display. I'm gonna turn up mask feather so it's a little bit smoother and I'm gonna bring the expansion down until I can't see it anymore. Then I'll add all these keyframes, move the playhead forward, bring the expansion back up and then slowly keyframe this frame by frame, adjust any positioning that I need. Then I can bring this up until it fills out the whole frame. And last but not least, I use a luma key transition, which happens in between these two clips, the transition from daytime into nighttime. So first off is I lined up my daytime bar shot and my nighttime bar shot. Then I'm gonna go ahead and apply the luma key effect to my top clip. Then under effects controls in luma key, I'm gonna make sure everything's starting at zero. Put my playhead right where the transition point is gonna start. Add these two keyframes, drag it forward all the way to the end of my first clip. Then I'm gonna drag both my threshold and cutoff to 100. And that's gonna give you this look. Along with all of those techniques, I'm also adding a lot of sound design. So here's the edit with purely just sound design so you can get an idea of what sounds I'm using where. And there it is, that is how you create a video like this. It's pretty easy. I feel like you can apply these effects to a lot of different types of projects. Shout out to Ren Hotels for having me. And that's it. Thanks for watching. I will see you all in the next one. Also, what do you think about the tiny mic? Thoughts? I feel like I'm holding a little, little candy or something, like a little piece of chocolate. Probably shouldn't do that.